Good afternoon and welcome back to my kitchen in Gloucestershire where it's a lovely late summer's day and I am very excited to be back. Um, we've had a little break last week, thank goodness. I went out to our workshops in Portugal where we hand make a lot of our furniture and thank goodness because Portugal went back onto the red list which means that I can't go again. So I have got to do a bit of rescheduling of flights and things to make sure that I can um, that I can go back um, when it reopens. So I was very lucky to get out there and do some wonderful mixing of colors and all sorts of things. So we're going to run till Christmas um, with these T for twos, which have been so wonderful and so well received by so many people. And so thank you very much for that. It's been really fun for me as well during our lockdown process to do the T for twos. We're going to be joined today by Michelle Nussbaumer and well, I don't think she needs any introduction, but she's the author of Wanderlust, the most beautiful book on design that is inspired by travel. And she famously says her mother said that she was born under a wandering star, which I think is such a lovely sort of expression of, that's so visual of about her. She lives in Texas. She has a home in Switzerland. She does wonderful, beautiful, layered, crazy designs. And if you had a look on my Instagram earlier this week, you'll see that she has an iCat covered truck. And as she said in the post, well, why, why would you not? Why would you drive gray when you could drive iCat? So I'm very excited that um, to be joined by Michelle, who I met in Paris at the wonderful collaboration, which we did together, um, called Ancien Moderne, which takes place every year at Deco Off. And she was exhibiting some stuff and she was doing her fabrics and jewelry and we were exhibiting some stuff, furniture and things. And we had this fantastic um, connection. And it started with, are you South African? Do you know Serena Crawford? And that's, that's how heart began. And we have been friends ever since and we've met in all over the world, all these different design shows. And I'm enormously fond of her. And it was a highlight for me when she just popped up into my showroom in London a couple of years ago and she was like, and I was like, wow, what brought you here? And it was this really really special thing that work, our design work brings us to so many different places. And when you look at the people who you've met in other places, it really can make it really lots of fun. So I'm going to check if Michelle has joined yet. And I'm hoping that, no, she hasn't yet joined, but I'm sure she will because I, it is 11 a.m. in Texas and she's preparing for the Kips Bay Um the Kiss Bay Show House and the Kiss Bay Boys and Girls Club is the famous show house that happens every year um, and it happens all over the US now. They did one in, they did, and there's one in Dallas, which is about to start. And she's um, going to be doing, I think, a virtual dinner. But she'll tell us all about that when she joins. Um, we've got a great lineup between now and Christmas, which is going to be lots of fun. Um, we've got Robert Passel. We've got Frank DeBiase. We've got Michael Cox. We've got Jeffrey Allen Marks. We've got... Um, I'm sure I'm, I'm missing some people out, but we've got a really lovely lineup of people, which I'll keep you informed. We're going to try and keep it um, to Tuesdays. Um, tomorrow is the Kips Bay. Michelle has just joined, says, hello, darling. Um, so, Michelle, I'm going to request you to join us. Ah, oh, you, there you are. I'm going to request you to join us. And then we're going to, and, um, we're going to talk about all sorts of fun things. So... I hope everybody can see me. I hope the connection is good enough. There she Hello, is. Darling. Hello, darling. Hello, Francis. I feel like I'm on a vacation already. <laughs> How are you? I'm locked down. Are you? Are yes, you like... it's so, so not me. It's so not you. It's, it's so not you to be locked down. It's so not me. Oh, well. How are you? I'm great. I'm really good. We are, we've gone so slightly out of lockdown, and then I rushed off last week to all our workshops, and then... Lockdown happened again, and I can't go back. It's back on the red list. Um, okay, well, in a way, that's good, maybe, right? Yeah, and it's not very... We, our government hasn't been particularly clear on what we are and aren't allowed to do. But you know, I'm, I'm speaking to my daughter this morning who lives in London, and she, she said that they're getting ready to lock down again. Is that true? Yeah, I think there may be a local London lockdown. Um, Whatever time is up. Hold on. There we go. I think there's going to be a local London lockdown. Now, Michelle, tell me about Kips Bay. What's happening tomorrow? Wonderless. So tomorrow I'm installing. So you know what that's like. Nightmare. Crazy. Nightmare. So anyway, yeah, installing tomorrow. We open on the 25th officially. And we have a couple of parties before then. 
and it's really the only gig in town or in the country. I mean, everything else has been canceled. So yes. I'm actually so excited that this is going forward. And we kept thinking any moment they're gonna tell us it's off, but it's not. Yeah. And what have you done? So I've done the Turkish Writers' Lair, which uh, is very up your alley, yeah. So it's, um, I kind of got stuck with a really nondescript room that I have to tell you I was not excited about. And so I knocked out a closet and made sort of this arch. And you know, when you do Kips Bay, you just get what you get. So you never know, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. And are they doing virtual parties? Are they doing virtual? I've turned lemons into lemonade, darling. I've turned lemons into lemonade, darling. Well, okay, you do that. That's what you do, right? That's what we all do, isn't it? Yes, exactly. And Michelle, are they doing virtual dinners, virtual parties? What are they doing? How are they doing it? There was already one virtual dinner and we're having, I think, another virtual dinner. And then we're lucky enough to have a few real dinners. I know I'm having a dinner with Veranda and a dinner that Cornelia Guest is putting together. And I think Mark D. Sykes is having a dinner. So, and maybe I'll have a dinner. I don't know. We're just happy to do anything. Well, exactly. Now, how bad has your lockdown been? Um, actually, Texans are not very good rule followers, so not as badly as one would think. We wear masks and we can eat in restaurants sort of socially distanced, which I'm not really sure what that means because some restaurants are packed, so I don't know. My son had actually the, the COVID, and thank God he's fine, exactly. but um, he's really the only person I've known who's had it, so it's apparently really bad. But yeah, it's, it's bad. People, um, a lot of people I know who've had it have struggled with respiratory issues down the line and a lot of fatigue. But later, I really hope that doesn't happen because my son had asthma sort of his whole life. Yeah. But he was really only sick one day. So I'm just praying that that's all it's going to be. But it was really terrifying for us. Sure. And Michelle, who's been home? All my children moved home from all over the world. So two of them bought houses, which makes me think they're maybe staying. And... Um, <laughs> I know, and one left and went back, but three are here, three are here, so yeah. Oh, how so, lovely. I know your mother's happy when you come home. Yeah, she's thrilled when I come home. Michelle Wanderlust, your mother said you were born under a wandering star, and I just, I just love that image. It's, it's, and, it? and, and when I read it on your blog I, last week, I was like, oh my God, that is, that's Michelle. I mean, that is just, that's just you. Um, why, why Wonderlust? Why the, why, why calling your, why call your book Wonderlust? Well, you know, I married a Swiss and strangely Swiss, the Swiss nationals are, Swiss people are the people of the country that has the most people with passport in the world. Oh, really? So, so the, yeah, people don't really realize this, but so Swiss people travel a lot. And um, I married my husband and all my father said to him is whatever you do, don't take her away. And yes, you may marry her. He immediately moved me to Rome, which was made me quite happy, but not my father. <laughs> and ever since then, we've sort of traveled the world together and we've lived um, in far flung places and we both love that. So he was the right one, I don't know. But he's just, you know, it's so great because he will travel with me and both of our jobs can sort of coincide together during travel. And so we both love that. My children are a bit displeased because they don't really know what's home, Europe or America. And they've all complained to me about that. Probably you feel something like that between South Africa and London. Yeah, I've been in London for 20 years and you, I kind of don't know which, which I think they're sort of both home. But Michelle, surely for your kids, home is, home is where you guys are because you have this incredible, I mean, you won't mind me saying, you do have, you have this wonderfully happy marriage, which um, yeah. is just infectious when, when, when we're around you guys. And um, so for your children, you know, just wherever you guys are, you must make home. And where, certainly wherever you are, you make fun. That we do that. We do. Yes. It's been fun having everybody home because all my children, one's getting married and, um, and three have, the other three have a significant other. So we've had sort of our crew, you know, that comes to each other's houses for dinner and sort of we do cook-offs. And like so many families, I think, during this time, um, it's been sort of a reset that has been good that part of it. Now, Michelle, tell me about something that I know absolutely zero about, Aloha Wonderwell. So I'm just gonna read here quickly. Your mother quote, you, you have quoted your mother saying that you were born under a wandering star, which I've said, and a description that I love, which is which I love, but tell us your kindred spirit is what you've called Aloha Wonderwell. What is that? Who is that? What is that? Okay, well, she was this amazing woman. She called herself Aloha. That wasn't her real name. I don't really know what it was. 
but she was a woman in the 20s, 30s, like that, who traveled the world. Went out. She was sort of like a modern day, um, oh, like, like a modern day Lawrence of Arabia or something like that, or Richard Burton, you know, something like the traveler. And women didn't do that. So she went all over the world and met with all kinds of sheikhs and especially was interested in the Middle East, which I find really close to my heart. And I just love the aesthetic of Middle Eastern culture and design. It's so beautiful. I love all the tile work. Anyway, so she was just an amazing woman. And I found her one day wandering through um, a bookstore and just have, you know, been sort of intrigued by her ever since. Amazing. How wonderful. And um, you have a home in Switzerland. Yes, yes. And a home in Texas. How, obviously you haven't been there this year, but in, on a good year, how do you divide your time? Well, I also have a, I have a hacienda in Mexico. So normally I'm in Mexico right now. Is Mexico um, your heritage? No, no, I'm a Texan. You're a Texan. A te so yes, what's I'm the tie to Mexico? Um, I grew up with a cat in my life. Have your dog there. <laughs> Sorry. I have no dogs I think, here. Like I think Amazon's come for the 25th time today. Um, so sweet. So I grew up going to Mexico with my family since I was a child and with my grandmother, and we always went there every year, um, several times a year. So I just have always loved it. I speak Spanish, and uh, my children grew up there as well, off and on. So it's just a place that we love. And really, we moved here um, after living in Rome for quite a while in Los Angeles. And you know, in both of those places, you can drive an hour and be in some other place spectacular. In yeah. Texas, you can drive five hours and be in Houston. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, huge, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's just not, massive. Yes, it's like probably bigger than Europe or something. It's like a country within itself. But um, so Mexico was really the right choice. So we can get on a plane, be there in, you know, an hour and a half. And it's a totally different experience. And if I were to say to you, which I've never been. Hamptons. We don't have the Hamptons or Palm Beach in Texas. So if I was to say to you, I've never, which I've never been, I've never been to Texas. Three things I've got to do. I mean, to Mexico. To Mexico, three things I've got to do. Oh, Mexico, okay, well you have to stay with me first of all. So that's number one. <laughs> oh, you're so kind. <laughs> and um, you have to hear mariachi band. You ha do you mean any Mexico or just my Mexico? No, your Mexico, you wanna go to your Mexico. Oh, okay, well I mean, I'm in the mountains, which is, bye guys. Sorry I was on the phone. God, that was awful. Um, anyway, <laughs> what do I want you to do? Oh, yeah. So you have to have a meal at my house. I usually have big parties with 30 people like every single night when I'm there, which I love so much. And maybe you have to go riding in the country with me, horses, yeah. I'm your rider. So it's, you know, Mexico, where I live, is very similar to the bush. It's yeah. very much like so you would like it quite a lot. So um, and the people are sort of similar too. you know, they're very colorful, wonderful people. So I really need you to meet those people, the real Mexican people. <laughs> you know the sort of compo people they're amazing i ride with all these people a lot and you and you talk about the bush because you had a trip to africa what 18 months ago yes with my dearly friend um trisha do you know trisha trisha she has the most amazing place called Izingwe lodge in south africa and um it's just glorious she's an interior designer as well she's kind of given up now but she did all hotels the biggest hotels in the world i think and her lodge is unbelievable it's so beautiful and she's on a hundred thousand acres that no one else is there so i got quite spoiled because it was really only us and lions would be you know right next to us i wanted to go on a um horseback safari but she said absolutely not but i see serena does it all the time probably you do too serena's on safari at the moment i've never done a horseback safari but they are amazing they're, they are she calls herself Safari Barbie, I love that. Well, have you seen him? She's covered head to toe, head to toe in animal print, which is a neutral, as we all know. And she's she's just inspiring. And, and that's how I was telling people right in the beginning. That's how I met you. You know, we bumped each other in Paris, and you were like, South African? Do you know Serena? And they were like, Hey, of course, which was wonderful. Exactly. Um, her daughter, your mom. Visit, her daughter came to visit me this year in Texas. She's so lovely. She's a mini Serena. Yeah, yeah, total mini Serena. Um, your mother, artistic and creative, am I correct? She painted your stairway, is that right? Yeah, yeah yes. my mother's that, beautiful. That's she beautiful has stairway. Thank um, you. What is her influence on you? Was it the I'm color sorry, shape? Well, you know, I think my mother taught me about color. So my mother's a wonderful colorist. 
And people can be wonderful painters, but it doesn't mean they're necessarily a wonderful colorist. Yeah. And so just mixing colors. My mother always taught me how to mix colors. I mix every paint I do. So any job, people are always texting me going, what's the name of that paint? And unfortunately, I've always mixed it myself. So I never buy a paint out of the can, ever. And um, what's, so what's, the trick? what's the trick? Well, the trick is to get colors. And what I do is I have a big palette. And then I mix them to match a fabric, you know, however you, yeah. what color you're looking for. And then I take that and have whatever, whatever paint company I'm using, you know, reproduce that. And I'm sure you've done that too. But um, the trick is watching paint dry. That's probably the biggest trick. So you have to watch it dry because it's never the same. So it takes quite a lot of time and it can be quite boring. <laughs> so what do you do while you watch it dry? I usually use a blow dryer. <laughs> <laughs> Good trick. Good trick. And four children. Yes. Are they creative? Um, they're all four in the arts. Sadly. Okay, well, so they Sadly are. for them. <laughs> <laughs> and and well, how how did you ex how did you expose them? Just through living, eating, breathing your world, or was there a specific I mean I would ask them, what did they say is the specific thing that you exposed them to? Well, you know, it's really a huge compliment because they told me recently, one of them said, you know, it wasn't the most traditional family, but we always knew we were loved. And so I think that's the most important thing is there was always lots of love. In fact, I probably loved them a little bit too much. I would sometimes <laughs> keep them from school and say, oh, don't go to school today. We'll just have fun together. So it was hard for me to send them to school. And just when I sent them to boarding school, it was really awful. But um, yeah, I think just I enjoyed them so much. I kept having more of them, I guess. <laughs> well, four children is a lot. It's a lot. It um, is. And what have you missed the most about Switzerland this year? Everything. Absolutely everything. Just the nature. I mean, here in Texas, I have gone out to people's ranches quite a lot, but I really miss all my friends and going on hikes and the river and just, it's so beautiful. Nature there is so lovely. You I tend really to go it. in the spring, don't you? I go every winter and every spring. Okay. So... I really like the spring the best, though, because I have a beautiful garden there. And uh, my daughter's there now. She was sending me pictures. And we have a huge vegetable garden and so many flowers. And, you know, here in Texas and in Mexico, nothing really grows so well. You know, it's not a very lush. I mean, it's green, but it's too hot for really roses or dahlias or peonies. And I have all of those. So it's a massive explosion of flowers there. So pretty. How wonderful. And is that the creative... England. I did a job in England a few years ago in the Cotswolds, and I was just amazed by the flowers. You just throw a seed out, and you have to cut it back. It's so fantastic. I know. We're very, I mean, we've had the most incredible, incredible growth spurts in the, the summer. They'd be absolutely amazing. And you're right. You know, you can put a daily... Don't you think it was that you were home to really tend to your flowers and really take care of everything? It's so yeah, it was, it was, it was a, look, it, uh, living in a, in, a, in a place like this, the, the, the opportunity to really tend our garden and the wonderful thing is that you know in england you can put a dahlia in the sandiest worst bit of your garden and next thing your dahlia is the size of your head it's, it's amazing I love, I love that switzerland's rather like that too so yes i really miss my flowers and geraniums i have geraniums in all window boxes hanging down so it's so lovely i really miss the you know what i miss so much i think the most it's just the lunches in the garden you know big lunches with friends and family and yes, you're all about them. you're all about community, aren't you? And your people and your. I really am. I really am. And you know, we've been going there since I was 24 years old, and my husband his whole life. So my husband has four brothers, and so we're a big family there, and it's just really fun. It's fun to see oh, all those. People. Yeah. And, this... and Michelle, tell me about Ceylon. Tell, tell me where I've been, which is it's extraordinary. Ceylon is sea. Thank you. Well, I'm sitting here now. So you can see my fabric line there behind me, part of it. Ah, I don't know what happened here. I've messed up. Oh, well. I don't know what I've done. Can you still see me? Yes. Oh, I can't see you. Okay, well, whatever. Um, so I have, I have a new fabric line out, by the way, with uh, Clarence House that I'm super excited about. Yes, I've seen that. Thank you. Very excited. So Yes, these are sort of like treasures that I've collected and found around the world. I usually go on three or four shopping trips a year, of course not this year, to stock the store. And um, 
it's just I really love it. I really started out more doing this in the beginning. Oh, and really? So the shop sort of came first? Yes, the shop sort of, well, you know, I studied set design in university, so I always loved every aspect of design, but I love collecting and I love, um, in fact, that's when I came to visit you. I had gone to that Lots Road antique auction right down the street from that's here. Right. That's just right. So, just so fun. I love an auction. And why the name Salon et Si? Well, I don't know. You know, it was before Instagram, so I think it, it would have been easier if I'd done something more pronounceable for Americans, I suppose. But I sort of wanted that sort of like British trading kind of vibe. So, and I go quite a lot to France. So I sort of turned it into India meets France, which is really what the store is about. There's a lot of ethnic things here from Africa yeah. and Asia, India, quite a lot from India and Morocco. And then I also love, you know, what I really love, I guess my aesthetic would be, what I'm very much inspired about is sort of a 19th century traveler you know, that a British traveler that sort of is wandering under a Moroccan sky, probably. And you're following your wandering star. Now, you, you, this I love, is your interiors are soulful for youthful spirits. Ageless, yeah? What do you look for? What's your trick? When I'm starting a project? Yeah. Um, so, client comes I, to you, what do you what, what do you look for? You know, it's funny because I think people think I have a very specific look, but really because I come from a background in set design, I mean, probably the jobs that get published more are the ones that are more wonder lucky. But what I really like is a good challenge. So when someone comes to me with something that isn't necessarily everything that I always do and working within sort of a parameter of they want something very contemporary or whatever works for their family, um, I love doing that. So I really start with a very extensive interview of what my client needs. I mean, if it's something that I don't think I can do or that I don't enjoy doing, then, you know, I don't take it on. But I like very much kind of collaborating with my clients and looking at everything as a new kind of almost film, if you know what I'm saying. So, so, I, I, did that. so I like, I also like sort of a high low thing and, um, you know, I like, I like working with, with artisans quite a lot. So I might use, you know, an 18th century piece of furniture and something that's completely faux that we came up with that looks like something from the 18th century. So I very much like sort of creating that way. I like sort of a high-low. So you mix it up? I do mix it up. Um, and I think, you know, I mean, I'm not comparing myself at all to Cecil Beaton or Tony Duquette, but... I like very much the way that aesthetic is sort of evolves. I would, I would, I would, I would compare you two to them. Well, that's particularly the Tony Duquette. I absolutely, yeah, absolutely would. Um, how Wait, did you I get? Saw that, I saw that Cecil Beaton's reddish house is for sale right now. Can you imagine? I know it's funny. It, it actually comes up for sale quite often. Um, it does, and why? You, I wonder. I don't know, and I think that people just battle to, I mean, it's got that incredible conservatory and, and drawing room. I mean, it's just amazing. Just, I um, mean, it's so yummy. Yeah, it's lovely. It's lovely. You oh, should move to England. You should get a house in England. I know. Someone sent it to me and I thought, oh, what a dream. I hope someone <laughs> wants it and doesn't ruin it. And Michelle, so you studied set design and, and, they, and, and then did you, and you lived in Rome. Did you do design in Rome or were you too busy having yes. babies? Well, I designed my own house in Rome and I lived in a villa on the Appia Antica. And um, I had so much fun doing that. And then just friends and neighbors would ask me to help them. So that's sort of how that started. Um, and then also, since I speak Italian, I would take American designers shopping in Italy. Oh, wow. Which, um, you know, this was the 80s, so no one was really doing anything like that. In fact, they had the Brigato Rosa where, like, bombs were going off in front of the embassy all the time. So it was really quite different than it is now. But um, it was an amazing experience. And Fellini made his last film with my neighbor. Um, so I got to know him quite well. And I think it was the last moment of La Dolce Vita, really. And that was the 80s in Rome. And then you moved to LA. Then I moved to Los Angeles, yeah, which was also a great time in Los Angeles. And that's where I really got more seriously into design on a, on a bigger level. And then what took you back to Dallas? Um, O.J. Simpson was my next door neighbor. 
and we had an earthquake. You had husband, lived. <laughs> <laughs> and we did carpool. So my husband was like, uh, so we got to get out of here. It was a little crazy. We had Judge Ito blocking off the street and it just got, it wasn't very, it didn't feel like very family oriented. So <laughs> we moved back to Texas. <laughs> I have to say I really miss it. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! And so you, you, and you, and you, and you, so you, you're back in Texas. Would your children say they are Texans? Probably not. Um, no, I'm. In fact, we were looking at a ranch a couple of weeks ago, and my daughter was getting a little freaked out by all the grasshoppers jumping in her hair. And the rancher, who was a real good old boy, was like, "Your daughter sure isn't a Texan, is she?" So I don't know. Maybe they're not. I think they might be more European. <laughs> <laughs> and if, if I've never been to Texas, what are the three things I've got to do? And I've got to go to Round Top. Tell people oh, what Round Top is. Have. Wait, they would love to have you speak there. I have to put that together. Oh, you know, Nicole, Nicole Gill Ottinger puts that together, and she's actually British and lives in, I think she lives in the Cotswolds. I have to put you together with her, but she would die for you to do that. It would be lovely. Um, Round Top is great. Tell people what that yeah. is. It's so much fun. So it's a huge flea market where just thousands of vendors come and it goes on for two or three weeks. I mean, it's just never ending. Like there's enough time for me to go buy things, come back to Dallas and go back. So it's just insanity. And where um, is it? When is it, darling? Where is it? Oh, it's out in the middle of nowhere outside of Austin. So you have to, you have to sort of sleep in the tent or if you're lucky enough to get a hotel or in your car, it just depends on what your level of, of um, desire is and how hardcore you are about finding a good antique. But I have known of people sleeping in their cars. Luckily, that hasn't happened to me. There are few, there's sort of some bed and breakfast. It's very iffy though, um, but it's great. And there's all this cute sort of pop-up restaurants that happen with great chefs and people dance in the streets and they have bales of hay out there that you sit on and people will eat and dance and eat barbecue and it's just kind of crazy and as you know antique dealers are sort of all eccentric so yeah. quite a lot of eccentrics out there it's fun Wonderful. so what are the other two what are the other two things that I have to do in texas well you have to stay with me <laughs> um everyone will be massively jealous um what else must you do you must eat some barbecue but you've already done that in round top so well, you have to go shopping. You know, we're big shoppers in Texas. There's a lot oh, of shopping. There's a lot of shopping opportunities. So I hate to tell you that, but I think you might have to do that. And then you probably need to go to Fort Worth and see a rodeo. Oh, wow. Like from Dallas. The, yes. The yes, where they bring in the cows and the whole thing. So Texas is very... Um, Texas is almost like its own country. You know, no one from Texas would ever say, I'm an American. They would always say, I'm a Texan. So, and I think we were the only state, maybe Louisiana, I think we we're the only state in the union that was actually our country. So yeah. we were, and only recently were, did we sign something where we can no longer succeed the union. But for the longest time, we still could. So Texans are very proud. Wonderful. Well, I'm going to come do a rodeo and go to Ron Top at the same time, I think. Yeah. That'd be fun. Um, your jewelry collection. Thank you. So much fun. Yes. I make yes. it in Mexico and India. And they sell it right now at 4510, my shop. And then, um, oh, this is one of them, this little chain. Um, you need it. I, I can't see it. Okay, wait. No, you drop your, drop your screen a bit. I can't figure out the screen. Like, why is this happening? Is there you go. I can see it. Oh, good. Okay. Alex? Can you come help me with this, understand why the screen won't go down? Something's really wrong here. Hold on. It's kind of filled in here, and I don't know what won't go down. Um, hold there on. There you go. Alex, that's Alex, perfect. My tech support's coming in. <laughs> that's, per that, that's perfect. Uh, you just this is it. her. Tech support. Okay. What's wrong with this? Why won't that Hi, go Alex. Down? Hi. <laughs> um, do we need to do that? Why are we doing, why is this happening? It was perfect. It was? Oh, I had it perfectly done. Oh my gosh, Alex fixed it. Sorry. Yes. You're there right. you go. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, so, thanks, Alex. The jewelry line. And I have these scarabs that hang off of it, but I'm not wearing one today. 
But I love the jewelry. And I originally just made it for myself, and then everybody wanted it. So I started making it. And we sold it in Paris when I first met you. Yes, that was it. I know. And, and, and they're statements. Happy. They're statement pieces. They're all rather sort of large and bold, yeah. And fun. Um, so I really have a lot of fun with it. It's been really great. It was at 4510. It's at a place in San Francisco. I'm only in like three or four places other than my own shop. But that's great because I just have one workroom really in both places that make it and so it's all handmade so nothing that I really kind of don't ever do anything twice you know it's sort of just all very different and and single pieces it's wonderful absolutely wonderful um what's next well, I'm, working, House. I'm working on another book I'm working on a line of wallpaper that you'll see debuted in um in the show house which I'm really excited about and I have so many projects that I really have never had this many projects people coming to me, which I feel like right now, everybody just wants to redo their house. So I guess since we're all nesting at home, everyone's decided they need to redo. So never had so many requests. And I have quite a few projects going on. In fact, I have after this Zoom, three interviews. I'm hiring some new people. But um, yeah, business is great. And I'm really having a lot of fun with it. I'm excited about their design. And I'm working on book number two and already planning book number three. So lots going on. There's no stopping you at all. What, and I have to ask this, what have you been eating in lockdown? What have you been feeding your family? Way too much. I don't know, feeding <laughs> much, but I didn't eat. <laughs> well, you know what? I really got my garden going this year. So I did actually grow some things. So we tried to eat those, but it wasn't enough to feed very many people. Um, what did you, you grow? Know, I grew tomatoes and watermelon. Can you believe it? Watermelon. Watermelons. Watermelons grew. I have bananas growing. I didn't even know this existed. Bananas grew this summer, uh, squash, cucumbers, tomatoes, and every herb. And maybe I had a few peppers, but I think the birds got most of those. Um, so, And Lucky one of my that. dogs, I have a new puppy. We call him our Corona puppy. So we got him during that time. And when he sees me working in the garden, he comes behind me and tries to help and he eats all the tomatoes off. He sees me picking them and he starts eating the green ones. He doesn't get it. But I think he's, <laughs> I think he's trying to help. So it's kind of sweet. I can't really get too mad at him. Um, this is the best thing about lockdown that has happened is that my children are all great cooks. And we go to each other's houses or they come over and we sort of do a cook-off. And one of my oh. son's makes homemade pasta from scratch. We love her. He can never break up with her. So she, once a week makes homemade linguine or whatever. We're, we're getting just, well, I'm not the only person getting fat. Everyone else is probably too skinny. <laughs> Fantastic. And Michelle. What are you eating? What are you eating? What I are we eating? We've are eaten a lot of roast. I do a mean roast chicken. We've done a lot of roast chicken. Oh, I like that. And I, yeah, so do, I, do, I, do, I, do, I do a lot of one pot stuff. I do great. I do a really killer um, seafood stew, um, oh, like which is best. great. Will you best? Yeah, like it's a, a bit of a cheat, but it's, it's, it's very good. I may need that recipe. Yeah, do you I, do shepherd's I, pie? I love shepherd's pie when I'm in England. It's yeah, so well, delicious. It's a staple. Oh, it's so good. It's what they call nursery food. Yes, I love nursery food. And Michelle, I'm not going to take up much more of your time, but you have to tell us about your dogs. I really shouldn't. It's quite embarrassing. <laughs> I'm like that. I'm that person that can't say no. You know, I see the dog and I just bring it home. I don't know. They're all rescues and I have nine yeah. dogs. So Aww. if you didn't hear that, I won't repeat it. So, so special. So quite a lot of dogs. Three of them are Great Danes. One is sort of a Jack Russell mixed thing. I don't know what he is, but he's hilarious, Fred. And Baltazar is the latest addition who eats the tomatoes. Um, and usually I have a couple of them with me at work today, but it was sort of a big day, so I didn't bring them. But so how do you choose who's going to come to work? Well, it's usually one of the Danes because they're, um, they just like to lay around. The other dogs are sort of more rambunctious. Like the little ones run all over the place. The Danes will just lay down and be there all day and never move. Yeah. So they're super easy at work. Really, Danes are, I think, the easiest dog in the world. I've had Labradors, and it seems like they're always chewing a leg off of furniture or something. You know, Danes are <laughs> finally there. <laughs> so much easier. Have you always had dogs? Yes. And so is my husband, because I guess otherwise he would have left me. <laughs> <laughs> or you'd have no dogs. 
One of the two. Um, it's really Michelle, funny. it's been absolutely wonderful just seeing your face and making me laugh and and having a wonderful time with you. Oh, thank you so much. You. So I feel like I went on a trip to somewhere. So thank you so much for inviting me into your home today. Total pleasure. Now you well, you're off to install, and then how long will you be gone for? How long am I gone for? Yeah. Um, well, I'll be the rest of the day. I have an interview and then I'm off to install. So I'll probably be there till like 11 o'clock at night tonight because it's, uh, you know, it's people are pulling all nighters right now. And watching have, the paint dry. I think we just shoot on Wednesday and we all have sort of set schedules because of COVID. Um, everyone has only a certain time they can be at the show house. So, oh, we right. have, yeah, you want to take advantage till whatever time they kick you out. <laughs> well, brilliant. Have a fabulous install. I can't wait to see it all over the Instagram. Thank and thank you. you so much for your time. Thank you, darling. Sending love. And to you. Bye. Bye. Well, if that wasn't just a hit to kick off the new season, um, it's ridiculous to say a new season. But um, ladies and gentlemen, Michelle Nussbaum, that was absolutely wonderful. If you didn't see the whole thing, I'm going to put it up onto the IGTV. We'll be back next week. Um, we've got a great lineup. Do enjoy the interview. Um, do, do join us again when we have um, our next guest. It's going to be really, really fun. I'm going to post it onto IGTV now. Michelle, thank you for your time. You were an absolute dream. Um, I love, love speaking to you and spending time with you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. And be well, be safe. And I will see you again next week. Bye. Bye.